here we have the Casio G-Shock Rangeman GPR B10001BJR. This is the green version of the GPR B1000, and this is the next evolution of the Rangeman series from Casio. So, quick backstory: this watch was announced back in early 2018 by Casio in two models, the black version and the green version, and it hit the Japanese market in April of 2018. I was going to wait for the US release so I didn't buy one back then in April so I can take advantage of any US warranty and uh, in August 2018 they started hitting the authorized dealers here in the US. But I only saw the black version and after a few weeks I was curious as to why or when anyone would get the green version so I reached out to one authorized dealer and asked them hey when are you going to get the uh, GPRB 1001B which is the green model. And they responded that, indicating that Casio had told them that it was a limited run and therefore they're no longer in production. Which surprised me because limited run and it never hit US. So how could that be a limited run? So I went online and looked, tried to find any information I could and found a small article on G-Shock Central that indicated that the GPR B1001B was discontinued by Casio. I, that kind of shocked me, so I went online and tried to source, you know, find a find a find a dealer that had the GPRB 1001B, so I can get the green model. Um, trying to find an international dealer it can be difficult online because you never know who's reputable and who's just going to rip you off. So I went on eBay, which can be risky in itself, and I found a dealer who had a couple, and you know, had a couple for sale. They were in Osaka, Japan, and I said, you know what, they have a good reputation on eBay, I'm going to take the risk, and I ordered one from them. And fortunately, one week later, I received it from them in perfect condition with the original box, um, original packaging, original docs, and everything. And it is identified as the GPR B1001BJR. J usually means Japan release, and the R, from what I understand, um, I could be totally inaccurate in this, but R meant or R could mean limited release. So that being said, technically this is the GPR B one thousand one B J R, even though GPR B one thousand one B is also how it is referred to. Um, so I refer to it by those two different model names or model numbers in this video as well as my written article which is on OCABJ.net. That being said, this is the green version of the newest range man which is the next in line from the GW9400 series. So I have here in my left hand the GW9400 3CR, which is the green version. Um, as you can see, um, I like to have the non-black version of any G-Shock whenever I can acquire it. So the 9400 series is a great range, man. This came out in 2013. This is a great watch. It has triple sensor technology, which means it has their compass, um, and their thermometer, uh, barometer, altimeter, as well as their um, tough solar technology, as you can see here on the watch strap, which means it's atomic charging as well as, oh, sorry, solar charging with atomic sinking. No atomic charging here. Um, maybe in 20 years, we'll have atomic charging. <laughs> that being said, this has also the ruggedness, which means it's shock resistant, shock resistant water resistant, and mud resistant. It's a fantastic watch in 2013. I also have an article on this reviewing it, and I think it's a great watch then. It's a great watch now. But they basically took all these features out of this watch and shoved it into the GPR B1000 series, except for the tough solar technology. So you can see here, it does not say tough solar on the watch. Um, but why is that? That is because it has GPS function. So they added GPS functionality to the range man to make the GPR B1000. And with the GPS functionality, that also means they have GPS time sync as well as Bluetooth time sync. So this has Bluetooth technology as well. And this range man will pair with a smartphone using the smartphone app to get uh, Bluetooth time syncing. So let's just quickly run through these features right now on this tabletop overview. Um, I hit the function button here to access the function menu and you use this crown, which is not a screw down crown nor a pull out crown. It's simply just a 
basically a rotational button that allows you to fun run through the functions. The functions are basically just like the function button on the GPR, or sorry, the GW9400 series, but instead of walking through the functions by constantly pressing the function button, you're going to hit the function button once to give you the scroll wheel. I'm not a fan of the scroll wheel, and I'll tell you right now, simply because it's not very tactile. There is an internal detent, so you can kind of feel when the button wants to stop, but even though the button detent hits, sometimes the, the function will will scroll like more than one. It's hard to get it to induce it, but it happens from time to time, like right there, I think it just happened. So sometimes you'll hit, you'll try to scroll and it'll move two spots instead of one. So that is kind of finicky and you just something you need to be aware of, especially when you're trying to operate very quickly and get to a certain function. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to world time and press the button. See, as you can see there, it kind of, it rotated while I was trying to, trying to press the button. It's kind of a problem with this crown. So there's one little ding on it. Anyway, there's the world time function. That's basically how do you get to the different functions with the GPRB 1000 series. So one little one thing I do love about this watch, which is a minor thing for most people, if not negligible for everyone else, but I think it's huge for me. So basically, I like I need to have UTC time. And in order to have UTC time on the um, the GW9400 series, you basically have to go to the world time view. And so here's the world time view. As you can see here, I have, sorry, that's not world time view. This is world time view. So I have world time in large font with the home time in small font, which is fine. But I prefer to have the home time bigger and have the world time in a smaller font. But with the GPRB 1000, you actually can have home time displayed um, in a larger font. But in the world time function here, it also operates the same as your GW9400. But if you go back to the, uh, the main screen, if I cycle back, you can see here I have home time in large font along with the UTC time in small font here at the top. But not only do I have that, but I have month, day, day of the week. I also have month, day, day of the week for the UTC time or world time. So basically um, the fact is that you can actually customize the main screen here and I'm gonna go ahead and do the adjustment function here and you can also see I have more settings here. I'll go ahead and go to display and you can see here for a setting display you can actually customize the screen and there's actually more than more than one display that you can have for the main screen. So let me just go ahead and quickly go to basic and show you the basic screen. So the basic screen is almost just like the, uh, the GW9400 series in terms of the what it shows on the main screen. So you have just, uh, sorry, I need to get out of, there you go. So the main screen here on the GW9400 gives you home local time plus day of the week and month day. GPRB 1000 main screen gives you home time, month, day, day of the week. So I was able to discover that you can actually customize the display and the main screen can show something else. So you can also have time navigation. So if you're using the GPS functionality, time barometer, time sunrise, sunset. But for me, I prefer time world time at the same time. So now that I'm gonna set that, go back now I actually have the local time along with UTC time and both have month, day, day of the week. So I have month, day, day of the week at the bottom, month, day, day of the week at the top in small font for world time. This is huge for me, but it's probably negligible to everyone else, but I love this feature. So it's one thing I do like about this, this new watch. It's, it's amazing that you had to upgrade to a new series just to get that, that ability there, but I do like it. As far as the new functions are concerned, it's gonna be hard to show you the GPS functionality on this tabletop review since I'm indoors, but we'll just go ahead and try to show you the nav screen. So if you hit this crown on the right side to get to the navy functions, you can see NAVI here on small font here on the right side. You can actually pull up the navigation um, point memo so you can actually record your points, like your uh, GPS points when you record them and you can recall some of the history. 
show you those settings here. You can have like goals, like if you're trying to, and you can also set up the intervals for when it pulls your GPS location. But unfortunately, I can't really show you too much in here, but I have some screenshots or some photos and whatnot on the GPS nav in my written article, which I will link to in the video description. So basically, the GPS functionality gives you the ability to just have GPS on your watch, which is great for a lot of people who are outdoorsmen, do a lot of hiking and whatnot. Um, you can also manage that with the phone, which I'll show you in a second with the Bluetooth capabilities. And that is sort of it there. And I'm going to go ahead and show you the Bluetooth functionality right now. The other feature that Casio added to the GPRB1000 to approve upon the GW9400 is the low power Bluetooth capabilities. So you have this smartphone app that Casio has, and I have an iPhone here, and it gives you this little graphical display. But to connect to it, you basically um, hit the left menu button, the function button rather, hold it down for two and a half seconds. The little G-Shock screen comes up on your watch and it'll begin the pairing process, or the connection process rather, it's, all, it's already paired. Connection completed, then brings up the graphical menu system here. But there's a lot of things you can have. You have your guide here if you need, the, if you need your manual or whatever. But you also have the management of the GPS stuff here, so you can actually set routes in the smartphone as opposed to on your watch. You can view the activity, which I have no activity data because I cleared it. You can import logs if you need to. So if you do the GPS logging, like the, let's say you go on a, on a long hike, you can pull those logs here onto your phone and then you can have the text files emailed to yourself so you can just manage it on your computer. But basically the cool thing about this is the ability to actually manage your phone settings. So I can set world time here. I have UTC, but if you need to adjust to different cities and whatnot, you can do that all around the world. You can set your you can set your um, set what world time you have. But I'm going to stick with UTC because I need to refer to UTC as my reference time for a lot of the work I do. We'll hit the gear icon here. As you can see, you can manage multiple watches that have Bluetooth capability with the uh, G-Shock app. I only have one watch G-Shock that's compatible with this, so we'll go ahead and select that one. If you have multiple, you can change the name of the watch, give it a different code name. But as you can see here, you can you can adjust various things. I showed you earlier that I was able to, to modify or, or change the default display. And here, I can also set it up here. So I, I showed you earlier how to do it on the phone or on the watch. Now I can do it on the phone here. So that's your basic display. You can have the time nav, time barometer, time sunrise, sunset. But I like time world time. So we'll stick with that. 24 hour display. I mean, obviously, I like 24 hour display. Units. I still use Imperial for distance. And you can adjust various things here. I've, actually, I wanted to change that to Fahrenheit. So it's going to send the settings to the watch. Oh, sorry, send settings to watch. So you can just commit that. It says done. Um, atmospheric units, um, Pascals. I actually, amazing enough, I still use non metrics or, for that. But um, screen display. Of things, but I've already adjusted those, so I saved my settings there. So it's kind of cool how you can adjust your settings using a phone and then send it to the watch. It's just faster. Granted, it's just a little convenience thing. It's kind of cool, right? Here you can see that the time adjustment's set for Bluetooth and GPS. So as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't do atomic time sync, but it does GPS time sync with the GPS satellites, or it'll sync to your phone via Bluetooth. And here it just tells you that it lasts synced with my my phone via Bluetooth at least at uh, September 3rd, so a few days ago. But your G your time syncing is going to be very accurate now, or more accurate than it was, especially when you do, want to do manual syncs. But basically that's kind of it as far as the Bluetooth. There's a lot more, but I just kind of an overview of the things you can do with the phone and you know set alarms and whatnot. Um, to disconnect, all you're gonna do is simply um, no, I do not want to import time or import logs, but you basically they just short press it to disconnect and it'll disconnect from the phone and that's pretty much it. With the addition of GPS and Bluetooth functionality, the one thing that they had to address with this watch is the battery. So 
the battery actually does last quite a long time. It's 29 months if you don't use GPS function. So if you're using it normally and like just day to day, everyday use with low power settings, because I mean, if you have this like setting down idle, it actually does shut off the display. It could last 29 months. But if you're gonna actually use it heavily, especially with the GPS function, it could vary between only 20 hours to 33 hours of battery life on a single charge. So it is solar charged. I mean, if you keep this out, you know, light, whether it's even artificial light, like fluorescent lighting or just sunlight while you're wearing it outside with short sleeves, it should charge it up. But in the event that you run down the watch quickly and you're only down to like, let's say one bar, if you can see the battery icon indicated, there's four bars. If you need to charge it quickly, they do have a USB charger and they include that with the watch. So one thing I didn't show you is the fact that this has a ceramic back. As you can see here, um, it you can see a little cat on the back, the engraving, that's the symbol of the range man. But if you compare it to the GW9400, it is a steel back on that. But the ceramic, although attractive and very um, scratch resistant, it is um, required in order for them to use this wireless induction charging. So basically, you're not plugging into the watch, you're using this little claw deal to attach to the back and it uses wireless induction, much like wireless chargers for phones. Um, the ceramic back allows that induction to happen between the charger and the watch case. If you had a steel back, it wouldn't go through, it would interfere with that. So we'll go ahead and show you here. It does also come with this USB cable and you're gonna plug it into the back here, or sorry, into this little red charger. Once you plug it in, it should tell you that charging has started and that's kind of it. Um, you kind of just leave this on. Right now I'm on four bars, so this should probably top off in less than five minutes. But if you're like at three bars or two bars, it could take a little bit of time. I didn't really test it because I didn't run down the watch um, to see the charging time, but it should be fairly quick with USB. But this option is available to you if you need to quick charge the watch from USB. And I have it plugged into actually an iPhone charger here, but this will plug into any, um, any USB port, a USB-A port like on your computer. So we're gonna just remove that and take this off here. It's just pretty much a claw. Just, it just snaps on there. It's pretty cool, um, but it's a nice way to quick charge. But even then, according to Casio, four hours of sunlight, daylight should give you one hour of, like one full hour of GPS function. So like if you're using the GPS continuously for an hour, that should, um, four hours of daylight should keep it going. So if you're hiking and you're using GPS just regularly to, to update your location, the sunlight alone should keep the, keep the GPS functions going without draining the watch. So it should keep up with it. Granted, I did not test that aspect, but based on the specifications, it should work fine. After covering all of the functions of the GPRB1000 and the features, what do I think of it and do I recommend it? Well, I believe the GPRB1000 is it is definitely a great next step in the evolution of the Rangeman line. I mean, you take everything out of the, G, the GW9400 series and you pack it in the GPRB1000 and then you add the uh, GPS navigation capability as well as that low power Bluetooth um, smartphone management aspect. So, I mean, it is a great step. I mean, there's what else could you do to the GW9400 to, to make a new Rangeman that is improved and has added features. And they've done that with the GPRB1000. But there are two detractors here to get to this point. Um, one is the size and one is the price point. So I'm gonna bring up my notes here, but the GW9400, this is a big watch. In 2013, it was a big watch when it came out, um, comparatively speaking to other watches. It is 55.2 millimeters tall, 53.5 millimeters wide, 18.2 millimeters thick. So the GPRB1000, on the other hand, is 
60.3 millimeters tall, 57 point millimeters, 57.7 millimeters wide, 20.2 millimeters thick. That is a big watch. As you can see here, it is definitely thicker, taller, and wider. Even compared to a GWG 1000 series Mudmaster, which is 59.5 by 56.1 by 18 millimeters thick, this is still bigger, just slightly bigger. And this was a huge watch when this came out. This GW9400 series weighs 93 grams. The GPRB1000 weighs 142 grams. So it's 50 grams heavier. So this watch in itself is going to be significantly larger and heavier for most people. And I'm gonna to try to put the watch on for you. So here you go. I mean, this is, I'll try to get that watch strap underneath there. So this is sort of on the wrist and note that there is gonna be some lens distortion here for people to understand. This is a wide angle lens that I'm using. It's a 24 millimeter effective. So it's gonna look a little bit bigger on the wrist than in real life, but this generally from what I'm seeing on screen, this is sort of reflective of how big it is, but let's go ahead and compare it to the GW9400. And this one is significantly smaller as you can see. Uh, the case, it wraps around a lot easier because it's simply smaller on the wrist, doesn't, doesn't gap out. And I have seven inch wrists, so just to give you an idea of where you might stand with the with the range band series but the gw 9400 it fits comfortably as well as gpr b1000 it does fit comfortably and it wraps around very well but the gw 9400 is just it just fits it's it's definitely smaller you don't really notice it as much as as you would think you would because it's simply not that terribly big a watch but when you compare it to the uh the GPR B1000, you are definitely, you're definitely on a large watch. So this is the one detractor for most people. It's just, this is gonna be a very, very large watch to deal with. And you're gonna definitely notice it on the wrist at 143 grams. But it does wrap well. I will say it is comfortable. It doesn't, you know, it's not uncomfortable. It's just, you're gonna notice it on your wrist. For the potential buyer of this watch, if the form factor does not discourage you from it, the only other item that might discourage you from buying this watch is the price point. The MSRP for the GPRB 1000 series is 800 US dollars. That is quite a bit jump up from the GW 9400 series, which MSRPs are 300 US dollars. So you're talking a $500 price increase to get the next generation, which adds GPS and Bluetooth capabilities. It's a big jump, um, it is what it is. Now, would I recommend the GPRB 1000? Generally, I'm gonna say no. For, if you're looking to buy a range man, you don't have a range man, I would go with the GW9400 series. This is still a fantastic watch for all the features that you get out of it and the ruggedness and durability of this watch case. It's not a very large watch as I showed you earlier, it's, it's big comparatively speaking to any other watch out there. I mean, it is a G-Shock and you get in this huge case, but you're getting a good form factor. It doesn't feel too big on the wrist for most people. And you get the triple sensor technology, you get all the features as far as time, world time, stopwatch, alarms, the thermometer, compass, bar uh, barometer, altimeter, and you get the tough solar technology. So you get solar charging and the atomic time sync. Great features for $300. Um, it is, you can get this less. Um, you can probably find an authorized dealer selling this for under 300 and you can definitely get off Amazon for about $200. I mean, obviously Amazon is a risk because even though you can buy direct, um, buy from Amazon as an Amazon seller, direct from Amazon, there have been stories of people getting fake watches even if it's sold by Amazon on Amazon because their stock gets mixed with other people's stock, like third-party sellers and it's a possibility you'll get a fake. So you can get it, get this down to about $200, but if you wanna find an authorized dealer, go for it, and you can still beat that $300 MSRP price point. But to get to the GPRB 1000, you're talking $800. And this is quite a bit of money for most people, and so 
For the first time range man buyer, I'm going to say the 9400 series should get you there. I mean, this is a fantastic watch and I, I still wear this watch. Um, it's a great watch for outdoors and hard use and when I'm not in the office. So I do love this, this watch. The GPRB 1000, unless you absolutely need or just absolutely want the GPS functionality and have that Bluetooth uh, management capabilities, then you can pass on this watch. But if you're a watch enthusiast also, and you collect Rangemans or you collect G-Shocks, then you kind of have to get the uh, GPRB 1000 simply because this is the next step in the G-Shock lineage as far as getting that hybrid smartwatch capability or functionality. It's not a true smartwatch, but they're bridging the gap by adding that Bluetooth capability. And it is a fun watch to wear, and I, I do like it. So, it's a, it's a weird recommendation here. I'm going to say no, get the GW9400 series for the first time range man buyer. This is, a, this is just simply a better cost to feature benefit ratio here. But if you're sort of just wanting, if you, if you can afford it and you want that extra functionality that this can give you, then get the GPRB1000. But I'm going to just lean toward recommending the GW9400 series and only get the GPRB 1000 if cost is not an issue for you or if you already have the range man or if you're simply an enthusiast slash collector then the GPRB 1000 definitely get one because if you're the enthusiast collector you probably already have the GW 9400 and you just want to get the next range man but that's pretty much it for this tabletop overview I hope this helped you out definitely go check out my blog at ocabj.net for a written article to give you um, more detailed like written words on, on the GPRB 1000 and how I acquired this particular model, as well as photos that I have posted up there um, to help you make a more informed decision on whether or not you want to buy the GPRB 1000. Anyway, this is the Casio G-Shock Rangeman GPRB 1000 1B JR. Thanks for watching.